I've been using NeoVim for around a month now and during that time I've obviously written and tried a lot of NeoVim configurations but this is the sort of config where it's not the same exact stuff over and over again so it's something actually unique and actually nice and I think this is the perfect config for NeoVim for me because all this, all this uh, one month, right? I'm basically writing one config with the like very specific options, and then rewriting it, and then rewrite again over and over again, and that was just this hell, and I really didn't like it. So I thought I'd give it one final shot, and this is what we ended ended up with, and it's actually quite different from what I've used for a long time. So let's just get started. Vim, I can just launch it up, and this is what it looks like. Pretty normal. Uh, you'll notice I'm using NeoVim 0.12. So for most people, that's going to be 0.11. The reason it's 0.12 is because I'm <laughs> using 0.12. But my joke side, it's basically the nightly version of NeoVim. So if you take the NeoVim source code and clone it, so you know you can go to their uh, GitHub for that. That's probably somewhere in their site. Well, what a good site! Doesn't even have a link to a GitHub. But uh, you can say like sudo make install and they actually have uh, instructions for how to build it so you can view that but this should just work. And that's gonna give you this new version of new in. And I guess we can start by editing the init.lua. So the reason I'm using Lua is because it's basically just this easy language. It's much more easier than Vim script for me and much more simpler I guess and that that's the reason. But yeah, that I've put this huge block here. It's actually the whole thing is just comments. I like making stuff verbose. So yeah, that's why I use Lua and then for the config I guess we can go through all of the I guess options here. Although I'm gonna speed through it. So all of these are just regular options, right? So I'm setting like let's say I want I don't want the swap file and line numbers and stuff like that. Uh win border, this is basically saying uh, some of you might not know about this, but if I were to type in something that is going to cause an error, so this is going to cause an LSP error, control WD for the diagnostics. Uh, this is what win border does. It basically sets a border for these such uh, floating windows and stuff like that. I am setting it to a single, which is just, you know, one single border. You also have rounded, which is really nice. And that's pretty much it for the options. Uh, new void, well, actually, I think I skipped. I post that one. Oh yeah, here it is. New wide, it's this sort of GUI for new wing. I'll just launch it up. But uh, its whole thing is that it has cool animations and nothing else. So it's a GUI for new wing. I have some config for that if I actually do use it because I do try new wide sometimes. Now, uh, one thing that I skipped here, it's uh, auto commands. So auto commands, for those who don't know, it's basically when you can execute some sort of command whenever something happens. So, for example, I have other commands for setting file types here. So, if I were to go to dot local bin and I were to edit any sort of file here, the file type is automatically going to be shell script because all of the files in this directory are shell script. So, that's really nice to have. I have three other commands here in Vim script. So, this is one of those times where. Lua, it's really hard to uh, use with auto commands. You have to like nvim create auto command, which the syntax for that it's really fine. But the real problem is that it doesn't accept uh, rejects or uh, regular expressions like this, where I say like dot local bin and then everything. NeoVim API doesn't work like that, so I don't like using NeoVim API for that. And then plugins. So this is really interesting. I don't use lazy. Or pack or anything. I actually saw this in some other YouTube video. I'll link it if I can. But uh, basically, I'm using vim.pack. So this is pretty interesting. It's a built in plugin manager for new Vim. It is a work in progress, but it's in, uh, as I said, the nightly version. And it's rather simple how you use it. Just like lazy, actually. So you can say like vim.pack.add and you know, give it a spec. So you'll say, the table here, source, and then the full link to whatever you need. So I'm using uh, mini for most of my stuff, LSP and Resitor and Colorizer for, you know, I'll, I'll just show how it works. Uh, you can see here nice colors, or uh, 775500, nice little colors there. Uh, so that's pretty much it for 
uh, the packages or plugin section Emacs shenanigans but LSP configs so I'm configuring stuff like LSP and a resetter in a separate file because these are really long so LSP what it says is uh, let's see it just, it just downloads LSP for a whole bunch of languages so we have our list here Clang is for C++ Python, JavaScript and then HTML and you know stuff like bash ls or yaml stuff like that i don't use most of these although i do have to say bash and uh lua is really useful so bash lua rust all of that it's really useful you know i'm actually programming in rust nowadays but trace all pretty much the same as lsp just setting up it for all of those languages right if i were to open it up there we go lua c c plus plus python it's the same languages but I do have some extra stuff in the, in the like markdown but uh, now we uh, set up colorizer I already showed what that is now for color scheme I write my own so this is where mini.nv has this really nice thing called b16 so if I were to go to colors mini black which is what I'm using right now I'm basically setting the palette with uh, mini b16 and doing nothing else so it does all of the color highlighting and stuff for me all I have to do is to you know set the colors and this is a really nice color scheme I use it across my system if I were to do like color scheme there we go very nice color scheme there uh, that's that and then I have some other stuff there like mini dark light and white uh, <laughs> the white color scheme is basically pure white and the light color scheme is like this uh, slightly softer white <laughs> I don't know how to put it and then mini modules declarations so I'm basically just Importing these mini modules like a mini dot file so pairs which is just uh, I'll show you so this is what pairs are you can see pairs it's basically auto pairs and then tab line is this thing in the top here I don't know if you can see it but that is what uh, the tab line is and then my key map so I'm sort of so uh, sourcing these later on and these are already getting calls so if I do something like in Lua and you do local files equals require mini files whenever this variable gets defined that uh, mini files is getting required so that's pretty nice and then key map it's just key map so I'm setting my leader keys a leader key in the options I think and then I'm setting like you know write save the file source just source the file stuff like that and uh, buffer navigation so you know you can use shift H and L for navigating buffers just like how in my window manager I can use super h node for navigating tabs and then omnicomplete so omnicomplete I don't think a lot of people know about this but vim dot up dot and then I were to say something like n and I wanted this to complete to number well I can just press omnicomplete so by default that's control x control o but in my key map for this alt shift q then that would complete it for me and if I were to give it like absolutely nothing then it also has this nice little interface for uh, completing so I can say like full charge equals EO and then I can press this again and then look at that it just completed so very nice little feature in NuVim built in you don't need like an NuVim CMB or whatever and then we have uh, highlights so I'm saying don't give the state line a background otherwise it's going to get a background I don't like that and then calling mini modules so I'll just ignore this for now. This is something I used for highlighting colors, but then I migrated to colorizer pairs. We already talked about that, so this is what it is. Tab line is the cool thing at the top, right there. And not this one, this one right here. And then files, good file manager. So that is this thing right here. So this file manager, floating file manager. That is it for my config. So pretty long video, I think. I don't know, I don't even know the time. But yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, my NeoVim config. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you later.